Kobe Bryant on everyone's mind yesterday at the Hall of Fame enshrinement. Vanessa Bryant, the wife of the late Kobe Bryant, accepting her husband's admission to the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame last night on his behalf. Michael Jordan bringing her up, presenting her. Vanessa saying that Kobe's still winning despite being gone. Kobe, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, the headliners of the nine-member class. But it was Kobe who was in the hearts and on the minds of everyone. We welcome in our Jalen Rose, who's going to be on NBA Countdown at the bottom of the hour. Jalen, as you watched Kobe Bryant be enshrined into the Hall of Fame, what, what struck you the most about how he was remembered? Kobe Bryant is an iconic figure on and off the floor. And if Michael Jordan is the original, Kobe Bryant is the remix. And that's on and off the floor, Jay. Their size, their ability to play boxes and elbows, play with their back to the basket, play face in the basket, and just the ferocity in which they approach their craft. And Kobe Bryant being one of the top seven or eight players to ever play in the league had a profound impact because they're Laker fans, but they're also Kobe fans. And for me to watch him as a young player run, playing at the UCLA men's gym and then playing against him in the NBA finals when really he came of age in that series. And then for him to reinvent himself, his name and his legacy after Shaq left. For those old enough to remember, Kobe became a disliked figure by the public in the media because everybody loves Shaq and rightfully so. Who doesn't love Shaq? And so he had to reinvent himself and become a champion. And those two championships meant more or just as much to Kobe than the three he won earlier in his career. So it was great to see him honored. It was sad that he wasn't there. I want to make sure that I acknowledge Vanessa and her family for their strength and their love that they continue to pay Kobe. And in celebration, Jay, what I did yesterday, I ordered a martini with $81. <laughs> that is beautiful. I was going to ask you your Kobe memory, but I didn't want to bring up 81, but you did. But thank you, Jalen. <laughs> that's a lot yeah, of olives. That's a lot of olives. Let's go on the court, Hannah. All right. Uh, Western Conference. The Jazz can clinch the number one seed with a win. But if they lose and the Suns win, Phoenix will get that top spot thanks to a tiebreaker. The Grizzlies, the Warriors play at 3.30 today. Winner gets the eighth seed in an easier path through the play-in tournament. The loser gets the ninth seed and will host the San Antonio Spurs. And the Lakers, they need some help if they want to stay out of the play-in. First of all, they need to beat the Pelicans today and then they need a Blazers loss to the Nuggets. That is unlikely to sneak into the top six. So, Jay, back with you. Uh, winner take all between the Warriors and the Grizz today, if by all you mean the number eight spot, uh, meaning they would only need to win one play-in game to make the playoffs. So who do you like in that matchup today? Hannah, when this gets sorted out, I'm going to say something that's blasphemous, that the Golden State Warriors will be watching the playoffs as the Memphis Grizzlies get the final spot. That's actually what I believe. And let's make sure we celebrate the greatness that is Steph Curry. He had a record setting season, making 10 plus threes so many times, shattering every three point record. Shout to Jordan Poole who's played well since Steph has been out. Draymond Green has been a menace on defense and flirting with triple doubles all season. But I'm going with the young guns. You know why? Because they're gonna be enthusiastic about this opportunity. It's one thing for the Golden State Warriors to get into the playoffs. It's another thing for the Memphis Grizzlies with John Morant, Jaron Jackson Jr. Valanchunas <laughs> has had a terrific year along with Dylan Brooks. I am taking the Memphis Grizzlies to get the final spot. And you're taking them on the road today. So very bold pick. I love it. Jay? Absolutely. I don't have a whole phone number. I live on the road like Jayla. <laughs> hey, Jayla, there are only two teams in the East already uh, who know their playoff seeding. The biggest matchup might be Hornets and Wizards. Both are in the play-in. But the winner gets the eighth seed. The loser could fall as far as 10. It is Knicks and Celtics, one Eastern on ESPN. Boston has a seventh seed and the play-in berth all sewn up. But the Knicks can hold on to the fourth seed with a win. Boston resting Jason Tatum and many other players. Now, if the Knicks lose, 
the Hawks could take advantage. Atlanta currently fifth, but faces the Rockets tonight with a chance at home court in its first playoff series. So, Jalen, who's a surprise team in the East that you that you like to possibly go deep into the playoffs? The answer to that question is the Miami Heat. But I want to make sure that I acknowledge the greatness that is the Atlanta Hawks in the East this year. And, and an East Coast bias. Because the Hawks are on their second coach and they have a better record than the Knicks. I just want to make sure I say that for everybody. With that being said, the Miami Heat, the defending Eastern Conference champion, Bam is healthy. Jimmy's healthy. If Ola Depot was healthy, I would pick them to actually win the East. And I know the Nets are in the East. But with that being said, the Miami Heat, Duncan Robinson is a sniper. Tyler Hero is back playing aggressive and knocking down his shots. And Goran Dragic is giving them quality minutes. And if I had to pick a fantasy basketball coach, because I know Coach Papa's in the league, so I want to pay homage to the legend. Mm -hmm. But next guy in line, Eric Spolstra. Eric Spolstra. So I'm going with the Miami Heat. That's not a bad choice. I, I love it. Yeah. Experience, mm -hmm. balanced. And no one's talking about them. They're like, okay, don't talk about us. And just watch us work. <laughs> Jalen Rose, appreciate you, bro. Seeing a few Been times in his career, all coming in consecutive seasons. And Bosch also won two NBA championships with the Miami Heat in 2012 and 2013. And he also has his number retired in 2029 or 2019. And now it's my pleasure to welcome in Chris Bosch. And obviously, Chris. I think we all knew that you were going to be a Hall of Famer. You would be inducted at some point. But when you get the call, I can imagine there's a different feeling. What do you remember from that moment? You know, it was funny. I was just kind of going about my day, um, you know, working, making sure my kids are going to class, um, things like that. And, you know, it's, it's just been a surreal moment. Um, I'm really still catching up. My feelings are still catching up. Uh, but I'm so thankful for the committee. I'm thankful for the NBA and I'm really just thankful for basketball for always being there for me and just being an outlet that I could be great at and it's just amazing that I'm here amongst all these wonderful wonderful people and you know we're celebrating this wonderful game. Let's dig into that because obviously we know how special you were on the court and what you meant to the game of basketball but what has the game of basketball meant to you and in this moment of validation what would you like to say about it? I mean, it's been everything. Um, the, the main thing that was going through my mind, it wasn't necessarily winning championships or all-stars or things like that, all of those cool things that I got to do. It was the bus rides. It was um, hanging out with my friends. You know, it was um, just having such a great time being a kid, you know, playing video games on the road, bunch of kids eating pizza in a hotel going out on those hot summer afternoons and just doing anything I could to, to be a part of it. That's, um, it, it was always my escape, my release. It was everything for me. Okay, now obviously fans and a lot of the media, we're gonna point to 2010 to 2014 when you were making back-to-back -back finals appearances, mm -hmm. when you guys were winning two championships in Miami with the big three. Uh, how would you describe mm -hmm. your career, your journey throughout the NBA? You know, it was short lived in my opinion. I wanted to play a lot longer. Um, unfortunately, it came to an ab abrupt end. But, you know, just looking back on everything that I was able to accomplish, all the friends that I was able to make, the connections I made, all the memories we were able to make together, that's what's most important. And coming uh, from a small town just south of Dallas, a place called Hutchins, Texas, um, and aspiring to be in this position that I'm in now. I can't tell you that I knew it was going to happen. I dreamed about it every day. I worked for it every day. And to actually see it manifest is just, I mean, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. But I hope that I'm, in, I'm a living example for, you know, kids, adults, everybody, all the young athletes out there that, you know, if you put your mind to something and if you put the work in, you know, and you have the visualization to go after your goal, um, you know, you can actually accomplish those things. So put that in your mind and, you know, make it happen. Put the work in. <laughs> and you're a living proof of what putting the work in really can turn into. Your legacy goes on and obviously you're a Hall of Famer now. I hope you continue to enjoy it. It looks like you guys are having fun out there in Massachusetts. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it.
appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And from Chris Bosch, we go to the Croatian sensation. Tony Kukoc was selected by the Hall of Fame's International Committee. He not only won three EuroLeague championships, but three NBA titles with the Bulls in the 90s, winning sixth man of the year in Chicago once during that stretch. Kukoc also.